Elon Musk is currently one of the most innovative and influential personalities on the planet. While he is most famous for his Tesla Corporation, he is also steadily gaining recognition as the leader of the emerging commercial space industry with his SpaceX Corporation. SpaceX has lofty goals of putting astronauts on Mars and making space travel accessible to the masses all by the end of this decade. To that end, SpaceX recently purchased two gargantuan oil platforms and is converting them into mobile floating spaceports. Here's a look inside SpaceX's floating spaceport. Ah, but before we dig into this, please take two seconds to smash that subscribe button, give us a like, and share and tickle that bell icon. It is only two seconds of your time in exchange for a lifetime of our gratitude. One of the main reasons SpaceX is looking to launch its rockets from floating platforms in the ocean is because of the development of Starship. Although early prototypes for SpaceX's Starship have been known to explode at a consistent pace at the company's Texas test facility, the overall program has been moving forward at light speed and has since fixed a lot of the bugs hampering the early incarnations of Starship. The towering spacecraft which CEO Elon Musk believes will be the key to building a sustainable human colony on Mars has gone from a CGI rendering to flight hardware in just a few short years. That's fast even by conventional rocket terms, which is fitting because nothing about Starship is conventional. Nearly every component of the deep space vehicle is either a technological leap forward or a complete divergence from the conventional norm. Its revolutionary full-flow stage combustion engines, the first of their kind to ever fly, are so complicated that several other aerospace corporations have tried to build them a decade ago but completely failed. To support rapid reusability, Starship Sleek Fuselage abandons finicky carbon fiber for much heavier and sturdier stainless steel, which has not been used to build rockets since the 1940s. Starship is gargantuan, and when it is mounted atop its matching Super Heavy booster, it will be taller and heavier than both the iconic Saturn V and NASA's upcoming space launch system. At liftoff, the booster's 31 Raptor engines will produce a mind-boggling 16 million pounds of thrust, discharging a pressure wave on solid ground that would kill or seriously injure anyone within a thousand yards and it will be heard as an almost unbearable window-rattling roar for up to 10 miles around the launch zone. A rocket uses controlled explosion to achieve lift, but the rocket itself is a bomb, so you are essentially exploding a huge bomb underneath another bomb to get it to lift off from Earth. Obviously, this is a dangerous process, which leads to the topic of this video. From what location could you safely launch such a massive rocket? Even under ideal circumstances, you would need to keep people several kilometers away from the pad. But what if the worst should happen? It's one thing if a single-engine prototype goes up in flames. If the humongous, fully-fueled starship blew up on the pad, the resulting fireball would have the energy released, but the same as several kilotons of TNT. In May of 2020, Musk announced to the world via Twitter the intention of SpaceX to purchase the two oil platforms with the intention of converting them into floating launch pads. A couple of months later, in July of 2020, SpaceX acquired two decommissioned offshore oil rigs at two different ports in Texas, which they plan to convert into massive floating spaceports to service the Starship launch system being developed by the company. The rigs were acquired from the offshore drilling contractor Valeris for $3.5 million each. Through a company called Lone Star Mineral Development LLC, which is registered to SpaceX CFO Brett Johnson. In June of 2020, SpaceX announced that it was seeking a team of engineers and technicians to design and build an operational offshore rocket launch facility. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk confirmed that the company was building floating super heavy class spaceports for Mars, Moon, and hypersonic travel around Earth on Twitter. In keeping with this lofty goal, the two rigs have been given the monikers Deimos and Phobos after the two moons of Mars, which sounds a lot better than the previous names for the platforms, those being Ensco Valeris 8500 and Ensco Valeris 8501. Phobos is located at the port of Galveston, while Deimos is located at the port of Brownsville. But how feasible is SpaceX's goal of offshore launch pads, and how might it be done? Well, it turns out, converting oil rigs into space ports is nothing new. From the 1960s to the 1980s, the Luigi Broglio Space Center launched payloads into space 
from a converted oil platform off the coast of Kenya. The multinational company Sea Launch converted the mobile drilling rig Odyssey into a launch platform in 1997. Dozens of rockets have blasted payloads into space from Odyssey since then, with a few failed launches as well. And in Florida, the Department of Commerce brought up the idea of building floating spaceports way back in 1989, but after the careful study concluded that the cost of such an endeavor outweighed any benefits. In 1996, think tank IEEE Spectrum suggested that Russia, Florida's Department of Commerce, considered creating floating spaceports and offshore rigs in 1989, but ultimately decided the approach is too costly in the short run to service the anticipated market. In 1996, Russian think tank IEEE Spectrum recommended that Russia marry its agile Soviet rocket design with the best oil platform technology in the world, which would provide an altogether new means of getting big satellites into orbit. A professor of law at the Scandinavian Institute of Maritime Law has extensively researched sea-based launch platforms, as well as the technological implications and possible legal liability. What is new in SpaceX projects, he said in an email, is that all other projects launch small satellites into orbit and some suborbital objects. Meanwhile, SpaceX is planning to eventually launch missions to the Moon, Mars, and into hypersonic orbits around Earth, some of which could carry humans, which is quite different from earlier projects. Right now, SpaceX is using launch pads located on solid ground at Cape Canaveral, Florida, Lompoc, California, and Boca Chica, Texas, but has also landed its reusable boosters at seas on drone ships. Currently, SpaceX is developing a super heavy lift spacecraft called Starship, and early prototypes of the vehicle have completed test flights at SpaceX's facilities in Texas, not far from Brownsville. The future vision of SpaceX sees the company loading up the Starship with passengers and cargo, then blasting off into orbit or even to the moon and Mars. If this fanciful dream were to ever become a reality, it would completely reshape the space sector into something more akin to a science fiction story than real life. Disturbance and noise around busy Starship spaceports with explosively loud liftoffs and sonic booms from returning spacecraft would be a problem for the company and surrounding communities. This is one of the reasons SpaceX is commencing with less disruptive offshore launch pads and spaceports. Launching over water can provide other advantages as well, like minimizing public safety risk in the case of a failed launch, and also a less likelihood of interfering with commercial air traffic. Mobile oil rigs can easily move to new locations depending on the needs of particular space missions, making the rigs the perfect choice as they already possess the ability to be moved anywhere in the ocean. Because SpaceX's vehicles are partially reusable, these spaceports might also accommodate landings, which may add another layer of complexity to the company's plans to retrofit the rigs. While SpaceX has performed many robotic ocean landings of its boosters, the stakes would be far higher if a returning spacecraft was carrying passengers, which is the plan for Starship. The ultimate vision of Musk and SpaceX is for these oil rigs to become the world's first functioning commercial spaceports. SpaceX plans to send tourists into space by the end of the decade aboard Starship, and this means these floating platforms will have to provide some form of accommodations to its passengers, as they wait for boarding of the craft where a liftoff is delayed due to bad weather. After all, it is likely not going to be cheap to grab a ticket on one of these rockets into orbit, so you cannot have your high-paying customers standing out in the elements on the bare deck as a platform. Although the ocean-bound launch platforms are still in the early stages of construction, sources at SpaceX have confirmed grand plans for a high-end airport-style facility to take care of the future passengers of SpaceX. Some of the future amenities include multiple eateries, gym facilities, helicopter landing pads, hotel facilities, a miniature shopping mall, and even private booths equipped with TV and internet for awaiting passengers. Although some credits call the goals of Musk and SpaceX unattainable or even impossible, nonetheless, they are making great strides every day and seem to be a sure path to the stars as well as proving the critics wrong. So are you among the millions who would love to take that first few flights to space? And what are your thoughts about these oil rigs that will be transformed into spaceports? Leave your comments down below, then be sure to like, share, subscribe, and tinker that notification bell.